different models with very unique characteristics. We're going to start with Almosefa, which has gone through a lot of uh, changes. And basically, it covers four arms. So let's show the slide for Almosefa here. And so what is Almosefa's ultimate vision, Tarek? Yep. Morning, everybody. So when we look at Al Musafir as a brand, uh, we see ourselves as a, you know, a, a champion for Saudi Arabia to begin with. And when we look at it, we want to be a part of the ecosystem in the region. We want to be able to provide our customers with the most value propositions that we can provide in all aspects of travel. And more importantly, we want to make sure that we are participating in the Vision 2030 you know, approach towards reaching that vision of you know, getting 100 million visitors into the country. So we see ourselves as a regional champion, more focused on our Saudi culture and bringing that across to the region. That's going to be an amazing engine of growth, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and you know, in September, I think Saudi Arabia's public investment fund acquired 30% of almost effort, really, right? And, and, and said it would invest 412 million in, your, in the company. I just want to correct you out here. Uh, so we did get uh, a non-binding term sheet that we have signed with the public investment fund where they're going to be acquiring 30% uh, of our company. And primarily, this user proceeds will be used for investing in the inbound tourism, for uh, bringing in uh, a lot of uh, tourists. At the same time, investments in all our other businesses, which is corporate travel and consumer travel. All right, okay. Jiha, yeah, you launched uh, TripBots in 2017, and you really wanted to create a new kind of OTA for younger Koreans, right? Which is user-based video, um, no, user-created video base, right? And yep. you introduced a travel to earn service, and you've raised eight million since the launch. So let's go to the trip, um, Jiha slide. So what's the key lesson you've learned since the launch? Is it hard to disrupt such an established? <coughs> ecosystem of OTAs? Yeah, I would say it's a strongly established. Uh, since 30 years ago, with Expedia Booking Agora being a dominant player in the market, um, that the key lessons I would say that I learned for the seven years of entrepreneurial journey was that uh, when I first thought about that question was people management, who you met at the right places at the right timing. I believe that's all about uh, the, the entrepreneur journey. But I was thinking about my son at home. I'm not even able to manage him. He's like 11 years old boy, but I cannot manage my son. So are we able to manage people in the organization? Hell no. That's, that was my answer. <laughs> so I, I strongly believe it's a risk management. How you deal with the risk, how you confront that, and how you deal with that. That's, uh, that's how I survive even through the COVID. So that's the key lessons that I learned. Through the, through the learning, running my own business. Okay, so we're going to get into more specifics of your business model, which I find really interesting, yep. and it really plays to social media, video, you know, content creators, right? So, um, Kenji, Hi. You, you've been recognized as one of Japan's fastest growing startups, raised 30 million since the launch in 2019, and you started a subscription based travel service. So, let's go to to that, and what kind of traction have you seen since the launch? Because you know this is a pretty new concept for Japan. Yeah, pretty new. So this slide says uh, this is today's message. So we are creating a new market rather than the current market. So travel subscription service eliminating the saves the time, users time, because you know uh, booking itself, uh, it, it it's not the purpose. The purpose is after starting the journey, right? So nobody book without travel. Nobody checks the prices without booking, right? There are some, but it's a geek. So uh, that's our message. Then the figure perspective, we've released back in 2019, and we had a four years experience, almost of all years under the pandemic situation, but we grew up. Then we acquired 85,000 membership, so they are paying. But uh, just what, once. What is your subscription fee? Uh, around $70, US dollars. $70, yeah. okay. Monthly right. base. Okay, all right. So basically, you wanted to develop a pricing model where people are protected from price changes so they can travel more. That was your. Yeah, 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 exactly. That was your, exactly. Yeah, okay. All right, so, so let's go to a, a focus right chart which tracks the shift of offline to online in the Middle East, which has a lot more room to grow, um, you know, because it's in an early stage, right, Tariq? So 
Um, I wanted each of you to share one human data point about your, you know, your sector. So, Tari, what, what data point do you want to dazzle us with? I think for us, the, the number is 100 million visitors into the region, and into, the, into Saudi Arabia. I think that becomes our big data point that we're all working towards, whether it is for leisure, whether it's for religious travel, or for mice movements that are happening out there. Okay. Jiha? Uh, for us, our product, it's 100% 100, 100 online and penetrations. And the ecosystem, as what Chai have mentioned previously, uh, what we have focused on is to create our own community within our platform. Uh, so young generation, most of our users are 20s. Uh, they create and share their own travel experiences through the travel videos. And whenever they got more reputations, they collect trip cash, which they can use it for their next travel. This is how we engaged them into our platform by sharing the compensations and let them be the player of destination and also the accommodation and being a marketer and we compensate them. Right, so, so basically you're also <laughs> turning your community into a sales force, right? Which is what Trip.com has done with Trip Moments. Correct. So when you hear what a giant OTA is doing, do you get nervous because they have so much more scale and so much more resource to turn consumers into salespeople? So if I, if I am scared at, uh, seven years ago, I wouldn't start the business. So I'm not, to be honest with you. So back in 2013, when I pitched in front of many people uh, at Cornell University, I, I say this in front of Dara, uh, Expedia, Booking Agora, it's boring product. <laughs> we need something much more exciting. But to be very honest with you, uh, Trip.com, Booking.com, and Expedia is, is in a huge revolution. It's turning to the young generation in a fast basis, especially yep. Trip.com. So they might be a threat to us as well, but I still strongly believe that uh, the, the industry itself is, is in a huge revolution, that travel industry is not just stuck in the travel, in the travel itself. We are, we are in the blurry area with the finance, with the mobility in everywhere. So I strongly believe that we have a tons of opportunity in this market. Right, right. So, you know, trip moment, I mean, trip could buy your community, right? Uh, yeah, Eventually. obviously, yeah. but All we're right. going to okay. try our so. best to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Kenji, share us uh, one human data point uh, that makes us excited about you know, Japan. Humor point, humor point. Mm. Uh, we are operating the internet service, so 100% online. The 80% of users uh, use smartphone. Uh, we have not native apps, but they, they are finding the hotels via smartphone, not personal computer. Right? It's a... Okay, so full mobile. Okay, so Tarek, you have scale, right? And one dis disadvantage of scale is that it can make you quite slow to innovate. Not that I, I, I think you guys move pretty fast, right? But what's the one product innovation you've done in the past 12 months that you're really excited about? So we've actually worked on a lot of uh, projects in the last 12 months, to which we are very proud of. I think one very important part was, uh, you know, we started collecting reviews of our own, which uh, we kind of, you know, applied uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to kind of, you know, moderate those reviews and get them online very, very quickly, which really helped us improve conversions on the hotels, specifically because we've seen a lot of customers, when they look at Middle Eastern travelers talking about a particular hotel, the reviews, the, the propensity to kind of, you know, convert those hotels is much better. So we were able to do that in the last 12 months and we're really proud of what we've done. The other thing which was one big challenge that we faced was mapping of hotels across different you know, supply points that come to us. And we also built our own you know, mapping uh, platform which really helped us make sure that the errors that we saw in terms of people searching and booking reduced to less than 0.5%, which really helped us get the right customer uh, expectations and experience to the customers out there. So while there are multiple projects that we kept on happening, but I think these two had a very significant impact on our uh, ability to deliver a better experience to our customers. Okay. And Jiha, you, both of you are startups, right? And one disadvantage is resource. Yeah. Right? But so what have you been able to create, you know, a product innovation in the last 12 months that you're excited about, Jiha? So uh, the, the products that we have recently released is the English uh, community applications and also uh, the chat, where you can communicate. For instance, if you book the MBS in Singapore, in, within our community for now, we have a 60 Korean who's traveling around Singapore. They can chat together to share the information, to find the friends, and to find the right persons within a community. 
So, uh, so you group your, the, your customers who are coming to Singapore at a specific point and they can actually interact with each other. That's okay. correct. So I strongly believe that the, uh, the revolution of travel itself is how we connect the people. That's the genome. And when, when we connect the people within a destination, either in the accommodation, they're going to have another, like the way of happiness within that community. So that's uh, one, pro one product that we have released. And the another product that we are preparing for now is virtual humans. So virtual uh, events, virtual human. So we invested on also the company invests in us. We have a two strategic uh, partner in South Korea. One is big credit card company, and one is the virtual human and virtual effects company in South Korea. Uh, what we do is to to make the virtual human do a guide for you. So whenever internet is available. The guide, whether it's he or she, we're going to help you to find the right restaurant, to right places, and to guide you the places that you don't know at your language. So that's the, that's the technology that we are developing to release in next year. Right, so a virtual guide which you can deploy to groups of Koreans who happen to be in Singapore at the same time. Yes, exactly. Okay. Kenji? Uh, we've released the airline flat price service in this May with Japan Airlines. So amazing thing is we directly connected with their system without NDC or GDS. Wow. So yeah, I was amazed as well. <laughs> so, uh, so direct integration into Japan Airlines for a subscription yeah. service. Yeah. How many flights do the customers get? Oh, all of the things. All, uh, all of the flights in domestic uh, user can book. The difficult point is that the uh, estimate price because we are developing algorithms that estimate price and volume, then the taking risks and manager risks. But the fluctuation of airline is much higher than the hotel prices. So that's why uh, we had many data with direct with Japan Airlines. That's why we need to connect it to to airlines. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about you are making expansion, right? You are expanding uh, both of you. Um, so you are expanding outside South Korea, right? So are you, how are you future-proofing your business against dilution? You know, as you expand, you have limited resource. Uh, so uh, I would say 10 years ago, before, especially before COVID, I, staying in a one country is much more safer. But now I will say if you stay in a one country, you're going to disappear. Okay. So, so these days, it's more about what age you are targeting. So, for instance, us, we are targeting the 20th uh, for South Korea, and I was quite convinced that if our product works and we can create a community within a Korea with, with this young generation, we will be able to go outside of the world anywhere because those, those 20 have their own common sense of sharing. For instance, they're not hesitant of sharing their like, daily lives, what they eat, what they wear uh, at Instagram. But it's, my mother always told me, don't, don't load in the Facebook. Still, she told me that. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's, yeah. Why, that's why KA culture is like spreading all over the world, because yeah, Koreans yeah, so love to correct. share, right? Yeah, <laughs> I totally so, agree with you. So they I think do it's really, really well. important for us to, like, uh, the, not thinking about the boundaries of the countries, but more about the, how, what generation you are targeting. Okay. So, so Tariq, I mean, you really do dominate in your home market, right? And so how do you encourage startup innovation? And are you seeing some interesting startups come up in the Middle East? Yes, there are uh, a lot of startups also coming in the Middle East. But so we don't have a formal kind of, you know, startup accelerator or something of that kind. But we kind of, you know, approach it in two ways. Number one is we encourage our internal teams to come up with their own uh, ideas or you know, new products that they would like to kind of you know, bring in. And we support it by executing it and kind of you know, getting it done. The classic example would be the two products that I spoke about was an idea that came up with one of the team members. He came up with a business plan. We kind of pushed it and we kind of made it through. Similarly, we are doing uh, something with uh, the UNWTO where uh, we are supporting them for women entrepreneurs in, in the region, where we are kind of giving our support in terms of monetary benefits to the winners. We're also working with uh, you know, Bista Village for Unlock Her uh, Future for, again, women entrepreneurs out there. So directly and indirectly, we are kind of encouraging startup ecosystem in the region. And at the same time, we are also making sure that wherever we need to be present, we are kind of you know, participating in wherever required. But as such, we don't have a formal accelerator kind of a fund available at this point of time. Okay, but you do look at investing or acquiring startups, Absolutely. right? So 
So <clears throat> what would be one startup, you know, think about a dream startup that you think would really uh, accelerate uh, Sierra Group? I think from a, if I look at from a Middle East region point of view, one of the very important aspect is the entire you know, travel companion kind of a product. Travel companion. Which would essentially allow them to be able to you know, work with them right from the inspirational portion and right up to post-booking part, you know, which, and specifically from a Middle East point of view, what we've seen is that the, the nature of the traveler is slightly different, their requirements are slightly different, you know, when it comes to food preferences, when it comes to activity preferences, in terms of destinations that they want to go to, and the kind of requirements that they need is slightly different, you know, so if we can build, you know, with no things, uh, uh, kind of, you know, without having any limits, I would definitely want to look at, you know, something in the lines of, you know, a travel companion that we could have right from the inspiration level, right up to post-booking part. Yeah, it seems to be like a, a, a trend where we're grouping people together when they travel rather than letting them m mingle with other cultures. I have a Korean, I have a Singapore friend who's married to a Korean woman and he recently took a my rail trip uh, tour to Mongolia and it's basically curated by my rail trip and it's all Korean food, Korean culture, all the Korean families together and they travel in groups like this, you know, so it's quite interesting a uh, behavior trend, right? That people want to travel in familiar zones. So even when they're in Mongolia, they feel like they're in Korea. <laughs> I think one important that, thing is you know, when it comes. To <laughs> pardon? Pardon? <laughs> that's strange. The Korean she married a Korean woman, right? He, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, and, and they want to experience Korean things in Mongolia. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, I, I got off track. Um, <laughs> Uh, Kenji, if there was a dream product that you would like to create for Kabuka style, what would it be? What's the dream product? What, what's the next dream. thing that you're working on? Because you've done the direct integration with Japan Airlines, right? So what's the next thing that you're working on? Uh, we have started to negotiate with many airlines about international travel. So it means we need to manage the currency risk, oil risks. So it, it's very big risks. But uh, my background is financial engineering, at, uh, working at investment banking, designing the derivative options. So at least much easier to estimate the price this industry compared to capital markets, you know? So <laughs> that's my profession. All right. So you are actually taking the Kabuku uh, playbook uh, out of Japan, and you're also expanding in Korea, yeah, South definitely. Korea. You're coming yeah. to Singapore? Uh, we've released already uh, Korea and then keen to the Taiwan product. And we are negotiating with the partnership in Southeast Asia as well. Right. It'll be interesting to see how playbooks that, you know, derive from very big domestic markets kind of then do outside, yeah. you know, with, with other customers. Uh, you know, we're talking about cultural knowledge, right? So, so as with the panel before, let's look at how you're tackling the twin challenges of demand generation and customer service. And I just need rapid fire one word answer. The most profitable, most effective demand generation channel for you? Mm, product marketing, so without any advertisement. Product marketing. Product marketing. Okay. Product is the strong. Okay, product is the marketing. Our own app. Your own app. SEO. SEO. The fastest growing channel other than product marketing? Ah, uh, Meta. Meta? Yeah, we use some. Yeah. Okay. I would say Meta is one of the, the highest conversion. The fastest growing channel for us would be social media. Social media, yeah, okay. Yeah. What is the most exciting channel that you're watching? Channel? So yeah, upcoming, like uh, a new channel. TikTok. Hmm? TikTok. TikTok, yeah. okay. Yeah, Snapchat, YouTube. Snapchat, YouTube. TikTok. TikTok, okay. AI, how many engineers are working on AI projects? 20 engineers, yeah. 20 out of a staff of? As a staff of, yeah, 200. 200. Yeah. We have six AI engineers. Six AI out of a staff of? Out of 75. 75. We have around 15. 15? Out of a total tech staff, around 200. Okay. So AI, where does it come into play? Just pick one, okay? For you, what you're most excited about? Is it demand? Is it inspiration? Is it personalization? Is it customer service? Uh, customer service. Personalization. Personalization for us, too. Okay. So the human test, okay? So, uh, Tariq, you've been in the OTA, in OTA world a long time, right? So which OTA do you have most respect for? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. 
But uh, I mean, there have been multiple you know, OTAs that have really scaled and kind of done a fantastic job. I've been in this space since 2004 and I've really seen a lot of them evolve, pivot, change. But one OTA that kind of you know, has been a partner as well as we worked very closely with them, I would say with Expedia. And especially when it comes to looking at how they have managed to kind of you know, bring in the B2B distribution piece in a much more evolved manner is commendable, especially breaking down the different aspects of the travel content, right from reviews to content to pricing to you know, all the support that they can provide to different other players in the market is uh, something that I really respect a lot. So, sorry, what's the company? Sorry, I missed Expedia. that. Expedia. Expedia. I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> oh, so, I said, well, where, where is this leading? Okay, Expedia. And, and, and Jiha just said that Expedia was boring. So, um, Jiha, I mean, what uh, is... I will amend that. I'm from Expedia as well. <laughs> it's a big but, sponsor. But Jiha, I mean, which OTA do you have the most respect for, though? That's hard. You can't say anything. <laughs> Expedia. Expedia? <laughs> All right. And you? So I want to say more startup things. So Hopper in US and the Kiwi in Europe, uh, although they are disruptor, but uh, they are making something, right? So they should be the respectable startup. Right, so they're creating say. something yeah, new, yeah. which is what you're doing, right? right that's right, that's right. what you're trying to do. So can I ask you, I mean, you come from financial banking and you've gone into this... Uh, Industry, have you found it really harder than you expected? So, as have you startup? found it harder than you expected to do something new in travel? Uh, everything, because given less resources, we can do just one thing. Uh, investor says, why not expand more? Yeah, I want to say, I want to do that, but it's difficult because given less resources, people, money, time. But do you find the industry very complicated and very hard to? you know, disrupt, because uh, there's so many layers and, and, and exactly. so complex. So the system between consumer and hotels is very complex, right? It's hard to join this industry for startup. But uh, we started uh, having a direct contract with hotels first. So we have already 2,000 hotel direct contracts. It's hard, just serve. Right. right. That's kind of hard to scale when you have yeah, direct, exactly. right? That's yeah. why you have to... Okay, Tariq, I mean, you're the senior in the group here. You've been around since 2004, right? So, um, and you've studied their models, I hope, right? So what do you find interesting about his model? I think the way the content is getting created and kind of, you know, getting uh, monetized and helping people, you know, earn on this one is something very unique. I really like what they're doing. I mean, okay. I wish we could have something on the similar lines in Arabic also. Yeah, you could acquire him and then learn from him. Okay, so Tariq... <laughs> I will be in Dubai. So. <laughs> Tariq, what do you find interesting about Kabuka style? Because it's a subscription. Do you think that will work in the Middle East? I, I think subscription is a very interesting model, and we've tried to kind of look at it, whether it would work in a, in a region like ours, and we found it very difficult, you know, where uh, the subscription model in the Middle Eastern region seems to be a little bit maybe way ahead of its time right now, but... I would really love to have some kind of a subscription model and hope to kind of, you know, give some kind of pricing benefits and advantages to the customers because it is getting very price sensitive right, right. now. Let's so you could, right you could acquire him also <laughs> and then integrate it into your, into your business. So we have a question for, for Jiha, right? So with the Korean giants like Naver and Yanoja already controlling the online travel market, big giants, what weaknesses of theirs are you targeting to acquire users in Korea? Okay, so Naver and Line, we are very closely working with them uh, in terms of developing a technology and, for, for instance, virtual humans, where we are sharing our IPs with Naver as well. So it, I think it's much more about the partnerships and cross-border. You're not just stuck into one industry, but having more communication with other industries' leaders uh, and, and creating a disruptions in that point. That's, that's the agile point that we are much more... Um, have, uh, much more easy to adapt to the new industry and also new users. That's why I think we were able to compete, especially in South Korea, over those global OTAs. Right, okay. So let's go to a human test, okay? So Tariq, uh, what makes you scared? I mean, Saudi Arabia is on fire. You know, it's so much investment going in. There's only upside, right? Is there a downside here? 
So I think from, when, I, when I look at it from a you know, post-COVID world, you know, we've seen travel come back and we've seen you know, everybody is very positive. You look at all the graphs, everything is going up. But we've also seen that the overall price points have gone up significantly for all the travel, you know, whether it's a flight ticket, whether it's the hotels. And with the looming, you know, talking about interest rates going high, inflation around the corner, I just, my only worry is I hope travel from being a commoditized, utilized product should fall into a very luxury kind of a product where it impacts a lot of customers' ability to be able to afford travel. You know, that have a direct impact on not just our industry, but also on our customers to, to a great extent. And I think that's the one that kind of you know, worries me the most. Okay. Right. So, Kenji, if you were to meet an alien, because you know, <laughs> Japan is fantastic for sci-fi fiction, right? <laughs> alien. Uh, yeah. Well, I know he's nervous now because he hasn't thought about that. What would you tell them about the human okay. story? I want to introduce the short uh, human story, just 30,000 years. It's short for the Earth. So the, the, my personal theme is how develop humans, so human evolution, right? So uh, it's hard to survive after 10,000 years later, historically said. So what the fact is that we are the most troubled animals all over the world, right? <laughs> then I believe the trouble make people to modest and more diverse. Then diversity will make next generation, I believe. That's what, why I chose this industry as a, as a first entrepreneur. Right, so you want to tell the aliens that we are a very diverse <laughs> <laughs> yeah, community. Yeah, I, I believe they are longer, like, right. maybe. <laughs> Wonderful, that's a very... And, you know, one of the ex, uh, excuses that I do with, actually, is always to get recommendations for K-dramas. And I can tell you I've had some really, really good recommendations from WIT before. So, Jiha, can you recommend to all of us the K-drama that you've watched that tells the human story best? Okay, so it's not my favorite one. I am not personally like that one, but it's a Squid Game. I think some of us here have seen that one. What's Squid, it called, sorry? Squid Game. Squid Game. Okay. Oh, Squid Game. Yeah, Squid okay. Game. Uh, the reason I picked violent. this K-drama is it has all the elements of our daily life. Like it's betrayer, love, sacrifice, and death. It's all in there. So I think that's, that has all it's the... It's very story. violent. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, <laughs> that's, it's, it's, that's a human story. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, pe a peace-loving Japanese guy. We have this guy that's all about, you know, violence. <laughs> And we have Tarek, who's the veteran who wants to advise them and may acquire them in the next few years. Please join me in thanking my panelists, Tarek, Jihai, and Kenji. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.